streaming. Okay, this is where I this is where I wait for a moment, uh, you know, just to make sure that uh, I can actually see the stream on the other side here. So excuse me for a second while I have a sip here. Easily run your business cloud applications with Joplus, a scalable compute platform with add-ons. Well, apparently, apparently, apparently. Oh, oh, do I hear proper sounds? All right, this is the part where basically I just sort of tested. So, you know, for the first couple of minutes, it looks like, what the heck is the guy doing? Well, the guy is actually trying to make sure that the stream is actually working. Otherwise, I sit here and I, I work and I do stuff and I let it go for quite a while. And um, next thing I find out is the microphone wasn't working or something like that. So that's, that's what I was doing. I was testing the microphone to see if it was working. All right, so I'm going to minimize this. Actually, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, say... Uh, Thank you to Linux Journal. Uh, this is this is a Linux Journal cooking with Linux without a net. So this is Linux Journal at lunchtime and cooking with Linux at lunchtime. And um, cheers to everybody that's out there. Uh, by the way, in case you're curious, uh, I am drinking a uh, bodacious Cabernet Sauvignon. This is not an endorsement of any particular wine. This is just one of the perks of doing this. <laughs> Get to drink wine at lunchtime. I know everybody gets to drink wine at lunchtime, but I can do it in my house, you know, just, uh, you know, as I'm chatting on, on uh, YouTube here. So first thing I'm going to do is see that picture of me down in the bottom left hand corner. It's down here somewhere. See, I, I'm pointing that way, but you know, uh, the camera rotates you around or something like that. Anyway, it's down there. I'm going to get rid of the camera because it distracts me, it distracts me. So I'm just going to uh, transition to a full screen version that does not include my face. So bye. Uh, there we go, and uh, theoretically uh, that should be fine. The the face thing has has vanished. There we go. All right. By the way, if you're in the channel, uh, please pipe in, say something. Here, I'm gonna reach across over here. And I'm gonna say, um, uh, hello everyone. Please chat or please uh, please leave a message in chat to let me know you are there all right and uh this this is a this is a word processor actually it's vi it's a text editor it's like the most basic form of word processor that you can get and oddly enough today i'm going to talk about word processors uh because uh as you may or may not have noticed at one point let me uh, take a sip here um my handle does say WFTL. So if you find me in other places, it says, you know, writer and Freethinker at large. I actually was using Freethinker at large back when the, uh, just, you know, I mean, I would, I would do this in my taglines, Freethinker at large. And I was doing that like way back when, the before time, uh, in the early days of the internet, you know, uh, they were talking like in the 80s here, okay? And then later on, I actually started writing professionally. So I started doing this, writer and Freethinker at large. And, uh, and it has been that way ever since, okay? So that's, that's where that whole thing comes from. But anyway, so nowadays, of course, like we're all writers. I mean, everybody writes all the time. We sit there and we chat in little uh, chat applications. And uh, in fact, if you, um, if you haven't had a chance to check it out, we do have, uh, Linux Journal does have a Discord server. So if you, uh, if you want to chat with other, uh, you know, uh, Linux and free software types, Hello there, Craig. Nice to see you. I see your words typing on the in the chat window there. Thanks for being here. Um, anyway, so we're all writers these days, but uh, we use all sorts of different applications. We use word processing applications still. And in fact, some of you are probably, uh, you know, um, oh, there's our Discord server. There's our Discord server. So you can check out the uh, Discord server when you get a chance. I'll put the link in the show notes below. And by the way, this is from Linux Journal, linuxjournal.com. And uh, today we're going to talk about word processing because this is about the whole writing stuff. So um, there are still tons of word processors out there. And of course, one of the ones that lots of people use these days is this one here, okay? If you are perfectly happy with trusting all your stuff into the uh, Google Cloud, and uh, I have to say, I have to admit, I, you know, in all honesty, uh, Google owns me. Uh, as in, I don't work for Google, but I do have a Google Home. I have uh, two Google Home Minis. I have a Google uh, Wi-Fi mesh network running through my house. It's scary, man. It's scary. Um, so, so I don't know what I'm going to do about this. Uh, you know, this uh, this thing. I'm gonna quit uh, Discord at the moment, just so that you know it doesn't it doesn't pop up little messages for me, and then we'll go back into it later on for post uh, for post chat. Anyway, 
Um, so I've got all this Google stuff in there. So I actually do use docs, but every once in a while, especially if I'm trying to do something a little bit more complex, then what I will do is I will go to an actual honest to goodness word processor. And of course, the one that you probably have with your Linux system, and by the way, it's available for Windows as well, is uh, this one here. So if I go to Office and, oh, let's just, uh, let's just, uh, the word processor, LibreOffice Writer. This is the biggie. This is the... Uh, no, uh, discard. Uh, yes, I want to discard the data. There we go. This is this is the biggie. This is the one, okay? And to show you what we can do with this one, and this is the one that's often touted as the replacement for uh, Microsoft Office. So if you want a full-featured Office suite um, that isn't going to cost you anything, and it doesn't matter at this point if you're working on a, a Linux, uh, you know, desktop, which I hope you are, or at least I hope I can convince you to, you know, work on one at some point. Um, you can actually use this one as well, okay? Because it does have a, you know, it comes the, the whole suite is exactly what it sounds like. It's got a word processor, it's got a spreadsheet, presentation graphics. So basically, you've got Word, Excel, and PowerPoint if you want to think in terms of the, uh, in terms of the Microsoft Word. Hey, Gerald, nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. All right, um, let's, so just to get a feel for how the different ones work, we're gonna go and take a look at one of the most famous, famous books of all time. And we're, this is completely, oh, this is completely uh, public domain, by the way, so we're not gonna get in trouble for using it. Excuse me while I have a sip of wine here. We're not gonna get in trouble for it, but let me give you a little hint, okay? Let me give you a hint. And uh, and uh, let's uh, build up. Let's make it a bigger font here, just so that you can see this one uh, properly. There we go. It was a dark and stormy night, and typically there was a beagle typing this, sitting on top of a uh, of a doghouse. And then he would say something like this. Suddenly, a shot rang out, and this was the beginning of a great novel, which said beagle never finished. Of course, I'm talking about Snoopy from the Peanuts cartoons, right? Right? Everybody remembers Snoopy. You must remember Snoopy, right? Peanuts, you know, Charlie Brown, Lucy. Anyway, and Lucy is usually the one who went up to him and said, you know, hey, you know what sells really well? You know what sells really well? A political novel. So Snoopy would start all over again and go, it was a dark and stormy night. Suddenly, and by the way, this isn't the public domain stuff I'm talking about. <laughs> Suddenly, a vote rang out. And... <laughs> And the novel was went from being a crime and mystery novel to a uh, to a political novel. So that's the way that he did it. Anyway, Snoopy. Apparently, Craig remembers Snoopy. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the source of that. And in case you don't know, the source of that is a book called Paul Clifford by this guy over here, Edward. Bulwer Lytton, Edward Bulwer Lytton. And in case you're wondering, there is the Edward Bulwer Lytton contest, which is a contest that is held every year. I've got several of the books called It Was a Dark and Stormy, Son of It Was a Dark and Stormy, Bride of Dark and Stormy. And these are all collections of entries into the uh, the uh, Edward Bulwer Lytton contest where you have to come up with the most awesomely bad introductory sentence to a hypothetical book imaginable. And of course, the book that everybody makes fun of by Edward Bulwer Lytton is Paul Clifford. And Paul Clifford is the book that has this amazing paragraph. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy that and we're gonna go back to our word processor here and uh, we're gonna start right over. V, control V. It was a dark and stormy night. The rain fell in torrents, except at occasional intervals when it was checked by a violent gust of wind, which swept up the streets, for it is in London that our scene lies, rattling along the rooftops the housetops, rather, and fiercely agitating the scanty flame of the lamps that struggled against the darkness. Isn't that beautiful? That is just beautiful, man. Really, truly beautiful. All right, so there we got our word processor. And of course, uh, like any full-featured word processor, we can, uh, we can make things look pretty. Like, for instance, uh, Paul Clifford is the title of this book. And um, if it helps if I can type, by Edward... Bulwer Lytton. There we go. And so we would, uh, so let's center these guys here. So we'll center our text here. 
I know you're thinking this is this is like a writing class. Yeah, sort of like a writing class. All right, we're going to change our style. This is going to be our title style. Paul Clifford, there we go, by Edward Bulwer-Lytton. Let's make that a, um, not default style, but a subtitle. There we go, by Edward Bulwer-Lytton. There we go. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Paul Clifford by Edward Bulwer-Lytton. There are, of course, other word processors that are available. This one is kind of the biggie. This is, if you'll pardon the expression, the 200-pound uh, gorilla. Run-on sentence is running onward, though only slightly so. Are you talking about me or Bulwer Lytton? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know which one we're talking about here. You know, you got to clarify that. Anyway, this is in the chat, in case you're wondering. <laughs> All right, so there are alternatives to this. This is the biggie, all right? And again, this is the one that everybody will, everybody in the Linux world anyway will compare to Microsoft Office, and rightly so. This is actually a fabulous and very professional and very modern Office suite. However, however, it is not the only one that is at this level, okay? And I'm gonna say at this level on purpose because I wanna bring up a couple of other things here. The next one I wanna bring up is a Caligra. Okay, so let's go back to applications here. We're going to go back to Office here. And I'm sure I have Caligra installed here. I must have Caligra. Uh, you know what? Let's do it this way. Oops, helps if I can spell. You ever do that? You know, you sit there and you start typing and you realize that your fingers are on the wrong keys. And then you look up and you've got like some weird thing. All right, so let's say use this template. So this is Caligra Words. Uh, for anybody who remembers this, there was in the before time, and I'm going to minimize this one in the background here and minimize, uh, whoops, minimize my min, min. The browser I'm using, by the way, in case you're curious, is a minimalist, uh, lightweight uh, browser called min, M-I-N. It's really pretty cool. I've grown to love it in a lot of ways, despite the fact that I do spend an awful, lot of time, an awful lot of time in Google Chrome. But I digress. Digressing is one of those things I do really well. Ah, thank you. Thank you, Bulwer Lytton. Just checking. I appreciate that. Thanks, Craig. Anyway, okay, so let's say blank document. Again, we've got different templates for different types of documents, which, by the way, the um, uh, LibreOffice is definitely going to have, especially since it's, you know, put as a competitor to Microsoft Office. And uh, I got to be careful how I use the word uh, competitor, but uh, we are going to use that word nevertheless. Okay. This is Caligra Words, okay? And Caligra is uh, originated with, uh, the Office Suite Caligra originated with K-Office. K-Office was a KDE-based, and you know nowadays we're talking KDE Plasma. And for those of you who don't know this, yes, I am actually running KDE as my desktop. See, my desktop here with the uh, cool Minecraft background, uh, which is running Ubuntu 18.04 LTS, Bionic Beaver. Anybody remember the $6 million man? Am I the only one who remembers six? Da 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 da. Anyway, um, I'm digressing again. Here we go. Caligra Words. So Caligra Words is a again a modern word processing suite or modern office suite. It does have spreadsheet, presentation graphics, all those lovely things that you come to expect. Uh, drawing programs to go with it. There, it is. It is full featured. However, not as well known. So let's just go back in and paste our our wonderful um, Burwer Litton introduction here, and uh, I'm just. Just because I'm lazy, just because I'm lazy. I'm gonna hit a couple of, um, of uh, carriage returns here. I'm gonna go and steal my, um, my opening here, which I probably shouldn't have done the way that I did it there because I'm gonna carry the uh, formatting with it conceivably. There we go, Paul Clifford by Edward Bulwer Lytton. Again, there's our dark and stormy introduction. And it does, I mean, there's no question that this looks different. And the way that it works is, is different in a lot of ways because you're going to have to get used to obviously a different um, uh, a different formatting layout for instance your page layout references all this other sort of stuff is sitting over here and it doesn't exactly look like uh, if you came from the Microsoft wor world word world <laughs> I swear I have not had that much to drink yet this is like only a couple of sips out of this thing but uh, yeah the word world the Microsoft word world um, if you came from there, you're going to be very familiar with the way that uh, all the icons are laid out out here and the formatting um, ribbons, if you will, you know, are laid out, including even the various menus and so forth. This is not a big stretch in terms of moving from that word processing suite to another one. But 
Caligra is um, is is laid out differently, uses different formatting tools, uh, uses different default styles. So it is a little bit of a jump from what you might be used to. Another big one that's out there, and by the way, I do like Caligra. I have found myself going back to this from time to time over the years. I never stick with it for any great length of time, partly because a lot of people that I've worked with, uh, especially when I've been writing professionally, either articles or stuff for customers, um, let's face it, people either use the uh, doc or docx format, and uh, Caligra has not been as flexible in terms of uh, being able to handle those things as LibreOffice Writer. But they, they do handle, I mean, the, um, the file formats, if I do a save as here, let's do a save as uh, dark and stormy. And we're gonna go to our formats here, supported formats. And um, let's, let me stretch that a little tiny bit here. Dark and stormy dot ODT. So open document format, we're gonna save as that. And, um, and then of course we can import that, or sorry, we can read that in from another word processing suite if we wanted to do that. But let's just see, do we actually have, let me just go back in here um, because I am wondering about how to save this. By the way, this is live, so you know, every once in a while you'll see or you'll hear me ramble or you'll see me mess up because this isn't of course the sort of thing that I have uh, always planned ahead of time. I plan what I'm going to talk about ahead of time, but uh, that doesn't mean that I don't make uh, messes every once here and there. I do not see well we've got an EPUB um, export which is kind of fun, Moby Pocket ebook EPUB. But I don't see, I see the open document text, which is what I saved it as originally, but I do not see Microsoft Word. So right off the bat there, that does make it a little bit more complicated for me. Hey, let's save it as EPUB just for fun, okay? Let's save it as EPUB. And uh, we're gonna call it dark and stormy dot EPUB. EPUB. And let's take a look at what the EPUB looks like, shall we? So that in the last of four, sure, yeah, I do. I do, wanna, I do want that. All right, so I'm gonna go, um, I'm going to go to uh, my, uh, I, I don't have a shell prompt open here. I did, I'm sure I did, but let's reopen another one. And uh, if I go uh, ebook viewer, which is by the way, the uh, EPUB reader that comes with uh, Caliber, the Caliber ebook suite, which we should cover one day just for fun because it's actually pretty cool. But let's go dark and stormy dot EPUB. Let's take a look at that. There it is. Well, it's not really fantastic, is it? It's not great formatting there. Hmm. Okay. All right. So we get a couple of. Uh, it's not. It's not. It's not beautiful, but it does work. It exports it as EPUB. Actually, let's try that experiment again, shall we? We're going to try that experiment by going to. Yes, I know. I know. I'm digressing. I'm going all over the place. But let's do a save as here. Okay. And we're going to save this as an EPUB. Okay. So we're going to call this dark and stormy. Uh, dark and stormy. Uh, stormy two dot epub. Uh, this must export to epub. This must. I haven't actually checked. Or do I have to export to epub differently? Let's do export as. Export as. There we go. Export as epub. Epub three point split method heading. Sure, I'm cool with that. And uh, we're gonna type untitled one. Let's call it dark and stormy two. Dark and stormy stormy two this is why people use foo by the way as file names so they don't have to do this holy high cpu usage batman i got a lot happening on this okay and i'm streaming at the same time uh batman aka gerald all right so let's go take a look at that uh, epub here just for fun shall we dark and stormy uh tab whoops wait wait did i not export this did i not export this i thought i exported this as epub Export as EPUB. Okay. What folder am I in? I'm in documents. Oh, of course. All right. Let's do this. Uh, documents. Dark and stormy too. There we go. Loading ebook. Ah, okay. So my, my line breaks. Is it because I've got line breaks in here? Do I have line breaks in here? Cancel. Cancel. Except at... Let's do this occasional. Yeah, there are line breaks. It's because of the line breaks. All right. Forgive me. I can't beat up on Caligra in the way that I was beating up at it because the line breaks are in the original text that I pulled from Project um, 
uh, from uh, the uh, Gutenberg Project Gutenberg file, which is where I stole this from originally. Again, it's public domain. I'm allowed to do that. By the way, Paul Clifford, there it is. Uh, in case you actually want to go out there and read it, uh, Project Gutenberg files. Okay, and um, uh, let's go back one screen there. And uh, of course, you, yes, thank you. And of course, you can get it in lots of different formats on Project Gutenberg. Lots of lots of uh, you know free and uh, free and public domain texts that you can check out there. If you think the CPU usage was high, Gerald, you should have seen it when I was doing the uh, cryptocurrency stuff. <laughs> Man, that was murder on, on the system there. And of course, at night, while it's doing uh, boink the uh, World Community Grid stuff, I'm sure it's chewing through a lot of cycles there as well. Okay, so as you can see, we can we can export in a variety of formats, EPUB as well, but I don't have good doc support in uh, Caligra, all right? So if that is important to you, that's obviously not going to be one of the ones that we want to go to. So let's minimize this, and uh, I'm going to... Uh, you can already see some of the other titles there, can't you? Like, I've, I've given stuff away here. So I'm going to minimize this and I'm going to show you one of the other suites, which is also a full suite as opposed to an individual application. I say individual application because there are times when you want something less and I'll cover that in just a second here. So the one that I want to show you, let's go to applications because um, office and uh, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. free office. There we go. Free office 2016 text maker. This is, this is very much a big time professional product. And there is a paid for version of this, but there is also a freeware version of this. So let's go back and do my, uh, my, uh, my title here. Actually, what I should do is just, you know, control Z. Come on, Z, whoops, control Z, control Z, control Z. And then go back to, the, so that I can just, you know, control A, control C. Let's pull in the whole thing here. And uh, let's go to text maker and I'm going to do a control V of it there. And I really should reformat this, but I'm not going to do it right now. There we go. Same thing here. Um, we can choose different styles. Um, I'll do a heading one here, you know, just so that you can see that we've got a lot of predefined styles. This is a full professional word processing suite. Um, again, take a look at the top here. If you take a look at the way icons are laid out, formats are laid out, a formatting bar is laid out, all that stuff is meant very much to look like Microsoft Office. This is a free Office suite. It's available for the download. There is a paid for version that you can get that does additional document or sorry, additional format support and so on. But if we go to the website, let's grab Min here and we are going to go to freeoffice.com. Softmaker is the company. Okay, freeoffice.com is where you can download it. And uh, this is a really nice suite. Like it actually is. It's a beautiful suite. It's professional. It looks great. Um, you're not, I mean, you are going to impress somebody. It's available for Windows, as you can see, Linux and Android. Okay. So this is, uh, you know, it supports a lot of different systems. If you want to download it, however, if you're going to download it over here, you are going to have to register your name, the country, your email address, all that stuff. So you actually have to have a valid email address because they will send you a product key that you're going to be asked for the very first time that you fire up the word processor. Okay. Um, but full, full support across a variety of different platforms. And of course, you know, full support under Linux as well. Uh, this may very well be your next go-to uh, to check out. Excuse me for a second. I need another sip of my wine. Hi, Anna. How are you? Nice to have you in the chat room. Good to see you. Ah, that's pretty good. That's um, It's a Cabernet Sauvignon, in case you're wondering. It's, it's, um, it's, it's nice. It's nice. And it's very inexpensive. I actually pick it up. Uh, I'm in Canada. So I picked this one up at my local Zares of all places. Uh, Zares is a grocery store and um, they carry a lot. Uh, basically, they carry Canadian wines. So you're going to get wines from one side of the country to the other. Uh, but uh, I've grown rather fond of this wine. It's nice. It's, it's easy drinking. It's pleasant. Um, it's you know reasonably complex. It's not the most amazing wine in the entire universe. But hey, for $9 a bottle, it's hard to complain. Okay. All right. Let's move on because, you know, I want to show you a few other things. Okay, so we've got our word ebook viewer. Yes, we did that. Let's go to an oldie but a goodie. And I say oldie but a goodie because 
it's not quite as full featured as some of the other word processors. And this was the word processing suite that came with the, uh, with the GNOME desktop. All right. GNOME, GNOME, however it is that you like to pronounce it. Um, like, let's uh, bring in our, let's bring in our Paul Clifford by Edward Bulwer Lytton. Normal. Let's go with title. Let's put that in the title. Is this still a subtitle here? Yeah, we still got this in a subtitle. So, uh, and you know, big, big, bold fonts here. There you go. This one, there was an office suite associated with this, but it was never tightly integrated. It was, uh, and, and that is something to, but that is something to take into consideration. But if you're looking for just a word processor and, uh, you don't care a whole heck of a lot about, you know, the other formats that it may or may not support, this is also a good one. The advantage of something like this one is that it is more lightweight than some of the big, giant office suites. I mean, LibreOffice is a big package, as is FreeOffice, uh, as is, frankly, Caligra. I mean, they're, they're big, heavy suites. And if you've got less than a uh, powerful system, or as Gerald was fond of pointing out, holy CPU usage, Batman. Here, let me uh, go back to my CPU usage there. There we go. There's my four CPUs there. By the way, this is actually uh, what I'm doing this on at the moment. And again, I'm streaming. So it does, it does account for some of the CPU drain here. Uh, this is an Intel Core i5, uh, my system. And it's got an NVIDIA GeForce 940MX with uh, two gig of dedicated RAM. Um, and of course, my, my PC is uh, running. The hard drive actually on this uh, crashed a while back. And I've got an SSD drive on this thing, which is why the... Uh, does it show how much disk space I have on here? Uh, no, it doesn't show it on, on this particular screen. Um, but uh, it's a quarter of what it was originally in terms of space. But God, is the disk fast. So the disk crashing was one of the best things that ever happened to me on this thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. <sighs> Lovely. Uh, oh, by the way, I'll just... Um, um, let's just get back into this for a second here. And I wanted to take a look at uh, the kind of exports that we've got the options that we've got so we've got the basic the abbey word format we do have a microsoft word format i'm not going to promise to you that it is a perfect export by any stretch of the imagination and we have epub so it's a surprisingly good suite in terms of the document formats that it does cover and um and it is going to be it is actually a lot more lightweight than some of the other packages that you may be running out there or that you may be thinking of running out there um, you do some of the things that you need to take into consideration, obviously, is what is the final place that these documents are going to? I mean, are you doing them for somebody else? Are you doing them for a company? Is it important that you have uh, that you have support, you know, across different uh, applications? Obviously, the open formats, uh, and I, I do count DocX in that, by the way, uh, the open document format ODT, uh, which is an official, you know, open uh, document format. And uh, DocX are actually fairly easy to carry forward. EPUB is completely open as well, which is nice. Uh, and in fact, if you want to do something just for fun, if you want to take a look at how these documents are put together, let me show you something interesting here. Uh, actually, let me go back to uh, Open Office. We'll do Open Office here. And I'm going to do a Save As. Save As. And we are going to save this thing in in Microsoft Word 2013 DocX format. Okay, so we're gonna go um, dark and dark and stormy on here. Let's just dot docx. So I could have just left the extension off. It's gonna tell me you're using Microsoft Word. This may be a bad thing, uh, but hey, I need to use it because you know I'm gonna be chatting with somebody else. So something you may not know about all these document formats. So if I do, let's do a MKDIR. Do I have a TMP? Yeah, I didn't have a TMP already, so let's go TMP. And I'm gonna do this unzip um, ls dark and stormy dot docx. Yeah, let's do docx. Where did I save that? You fool, did I save it in documents again? Uh, save as, where does save as save by default? Documents, ah, oy vey, gefilte fish, all right already. Um, it's, that's a French Canadian expression in case you're wondering. No, I'm lying. I'm making that up. <laughs> okay. So if I go unzip and I go tilde documents and I take a look at uh, dark and stormy dot docx, let's do docx. Check this out. This is actually basically a zip file. A docx document is a zip file. 
and all of the bits and pieces that make up the document are actually visible. So it is actually an open document format. So in that respect, um, you know, we've in, in the Linux world, we've beat up on Microsoft a lot over the years, but this is an open format. Let me show you another one, okay? Um, and I'm gonna do uh, RM, ah, don't worry about it right now. Uh, let's do uh, ODT. So we're gonna do an ODT and I'm gonna go, oops, MKDR, O, yeah. R O C. that's what I mean about live. You make mistakes on live. CD ODT, I'm gonna to go to ODT and then I'm gonna do unzip and I'm gonna pretend that it's in documents again. And I'm gonna say dark and stormy. What are my dark and stormy options? Uh, EPUB, all right, let's actually save it to the, uh, the uh, official format. So I'm gonna say save as, and uh, we're gonna not do that, but we're gonna do ODT, the open document text. Did I just disconnect? Did I just disconnect? Did we reconnect? Are we back online? That was interesting. Okay, there we go. So uh, in case you didn't see that, while well, we briefly disconnected for whatever reason, um, the configure is sorry. The, the whole document itself is just a zip file. Uh, Nikolai, Nikolai Pavlov. Let me answer the question here. You asked uh, what the uh, distribution I'm using. This is actually Kubuntu, Kubuntu Bionic Beaver. Uh, it's the beta version of the upcoming Ubuntu slash Kubuntu, or I like to call them the Star Ubuntu's uh, release. So there you go. So anyway, so we've extracted that document. And in fact, let's go one step further and let's do the .epub, okay? Okay, I made, sorry, I made that one dark and stormy too, didn't I? .epub. And I'm gonna say, sure, I'm gonna say uh, all, because I don't really care. Now, if you take a look, you'll see that the, um, that the EPUB file is also just a zip file. And all the bits and pieces that define the document are actually carried inside the zip file that goes by a different extension. So .epub is a zip file, .docx is a zip file, and um, .odt is a zip file. All three are open formats, and you can look through the uh, the final document, um, or sorry, the expanded document, and see what all the stuff is. All right, cool, cool. I actually think it is cool. Okay, so we're getting close to where I want to wrap this up, but I wanted to show you a couple of other things just to finish this up. So, so we've got these we've got these big giant suites, right, which give us like all the all the tools, all the things, but every once in a while, you just want to write without having the distraction of a million things across your screen. Or if you're a writer, this is actually sometimes a difficult thing to do. And for that reason, um, I have friends, uh, I have uh, I have a couple of friends, but one in particular who's actually, uh, who's actually a um, science fiction writer. He's uh, one of the best known science fiction writers out there. That would be my buddy, Robert J. Sawyer. And he still uses WordStar for DOS. It's 2018 and this guy still uses WordStar for DOS, which I might make fun of, but every once in a while, I have been known to fire up a completely plain sheet, like whether it's VI or Kate or any of the text processors or this one here. Let me just uh, go into this one here. Focus Writer, and let's make let's see whether or not that, that the whole screen disappears on this. Okay. Uh, no, don't restore from the emergency cache. I don't care. All right. So if you are looking at this right now, you are looking at a very plain screen. The idea of Focus Writer, which is a word processor, by the way. And in fact, if I move my mouse up here, see that? If I move my mouse up here, do you see the uh, bar appearing up at the top there? file, format, save, all that stuff. But the rest of the time, this is what it looks like. So let's do a control V, uh, control V, control V. Oh, <laughs> it doesn't even have that in the clipboard buffer. All right, let's do it this way then. Paul Clifford. It was a dark and stormy night. I'm gonna do it like, I'm gonna do it like uh, Snoopy here. Suddenly. And let's make it a political novel. A vote rang out. Whoops. Oh, oh, I, better, better. We'll, we'll make we'll make it a uh, we'll make it a Russian meddling on Facebook novel. How about that? Suddenly, a Russian Twitter bot rang out. <laughs> Am I gonna get in trouble for this? <laughs> oh my! Excuse me. Another sip. 
Ah, uh, anyway, so really, really basic. The idea behind this is it's distraction free. You can just sit down and you can just write. Now there are things that you can do. There are themes, for instance, uh, you know, you can change your background. So I'm going to close this for a second. You can change your background so you can make it, you know, something that, it, that inspires you. Maybe I want to write a, a science fiction novel. Maybe what I want to write is a science fiction novel. So suddenly, uh, suddenly not a Twitter bot, but uh, suddenly, an alien probe rang out. Yeah, an alien probe rang out. There we go. Then we've got, uh, sorry, and, and this can't be Paul Clifford because that's not the novel. So let's make this uh, uh, aliens, aliens, D-A-S, aliens dark and stormy. There we go. All right, let's go to themes again. We can change our themes up here. You notice uh, old school. I like old school, by the way. I like this one. It's just a black screen. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a black screen with green text. It doesn't get much more minimalistic than that. But in all cases, we can go up here and I can do file and I can do a save as. And um, let me stretch that out a little tiny bit here so that you can see the, there we go, open documents. So we've got our open document format, uh, rich text. It, there's no Microsoft Word over here, but open document is, you know, the it is the standard so um, you can save your stuff out that way, or you can save it as plain text to import later on. I would be tempted to just do it in um, in open document format, but uh, let's just cancel that for a second. Um, and uh, let me see, uh, let me see, uh, an alien probe rang out. Um, oh yeah, and let's let's do one more. Let's do another theme here. Let's do another theme. Let's uh, here's another old uh, gentle blues. Let's go another old school. I kind of like the one that's just got the um, the background here, the writing desk. I kind of like that one. Ooh, tranquility. Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna cancel that and I'm gonna go Alt Tab because I'm gonna go Control C on that. And um, and that do do I want to leave it there? Do I want to leave it there? Caligra. There is one other one which you don't really need to go at anymore. There was one once upon a time which I used a lot, and I, I wanted to mention it just because I used it a lot at one time, and that was J Darkroom. And J Darkroom is um, is a Java file. So for that you would need Java dash sorry Java dash jar downloads and uh, J Darkroom dot jar. And uh, here we go, auto detected, there we go. And uh, this one, like Focus Writer, uh, in fact, uh, it's, it's more, it's, it's, I mean, there's, there's no funky menu that comes up here or anything like that. This is a really, really quiet, basic um, word processor, okay? Um, and uh, I'm just gonna, it was a dark and stormy night. This is a lot like the uh, green old school version that you get on a Focus Writer. Again, I would actually suggest that you get Focus Writer because A, it's not a Java program. So I'm going to go Alt Tab and I'm going to go Control C here. And uh, I would suggest that you go with uh, Focus Writer on this one. Is Focus? I didn't actually search for Focus Writer. But you don't actually need to search for Focus Writer because uh, there we go. Duck, duck, go. Got code. Focus Writer. Um, you don't have to do an awful lot about that because uh, Focus Writer is actually in your repository. So if you've got any of the distributions like the one that I'm using here at the moment, um, it's going to be in your uh, repository anyway. You do not have to install that one. So let's just go to my big screen here. Go to my big screen here. And where is my studio here? And uh, I'll just transition back to the webcam because I'm going to wrap it up here. There we go. There we go. So I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up here and uh, leave you with this, which is basically that there are a heck of a lot of different uh, word processing type applications, including some things that will be nice and quiet for you if you don't want to have to deal with um, you don't want to have to deal with uh, the uh, the cost, so to speak, of um, of in, in terms of processing power is really what I'm talking about here. Not necessarily cost, although you can spend money on some of these things, but in terms of processing power and so forth, or you don't want to deal with, you know, a million things on your screen, a million distractions. There are some good options there. And of course, the best one of those is, is Focus Writer. And for that one, all you need to do is this one, sudo apt install Focus Writer. If you're dealing with a, um, you know, or maybe yum, uh, yum install Focus Writer, but sudo apt install Focus Writer is all you have to do. Uh, it's not going to take much more than that for you to get that on your system. And uh, and uh, this is where this is where this is where I go back to this, 
and uh, I fade my face out again just because, you know, it's distracting me. I'm looking at it. It's distracting me. There we go. Uh, transition again. And, uh, and I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to say goodbye. And I'm going to thank everyone for coming here. And I'm going to thank, uh, thanks to Linux Journal. VI, Emacs, VI, Emacs. There we go. Somebody had to do it. VI, Emacs. Anyway, and thanks to Linux Journal for, uh, for uh, you know, uh, doing this. And um, thanks to everyone who has joined me online. And thanks to anybody who might be watching later on. You know how this works. Um, give me the thumbs up. Leave some comments. Tell me what else you'd like me to talk about. The idea is that every Tuesday, we're going to meet here and do Cooking with Linux Live. And uh, that means without a net. That means uh, making mistakes. That means answering questions online if you've got the questions online. But please leave a comment. The actual video for this will show up a little bit later on today. It usually takes a couple of hours for, um, for uh, the uh, system to figure it out and, um, and upload it as an official video into YouTube. And then at that point, you can, um, you can let me know what you think and uh, what other things you'd like me to cover in future cooking with Linux without a net. And, uh, and please, please, uh, the other thing I'm going to suggest that you do is you go to youtube.com slash user slash freethinker at large. And if you want to keep up on the sorts of things that I do, um, please go over here and there's this, red, there's this red button here that says subscribe. You want to hit that red button and, uh, and subscribe to the channel and say nice things. <laughs> Share with your friends, your family, your dogs, your cats, your hamsters. I don't really care. Share it, you know, um, and uh, we'll talk to you again and we'll see you next week. Next week. And now I have to go and find where is that OBS studio? There it is. Bye. Talk to you later.